Hello. Welcome to Applied Research Methods in Sports and Kinesiology, KINE 5301, Module 6. Uh, in this module, we'll look at statistical methods in sports management. And this will be Part 1. We'll complete Part 2 in Module 7. The topics that we will cover Chapter 13, an analysis of structure. Chapter 14, relationships among variables. In chapter 13, analysis of structure, we'll take a look at the following objectives. First, we seek to understand the importance of reliability, understand the importance of validity, understand exploratory factor analysis, and also seek to understand confirmatory factor analysis. So as we enter this module, we'll look at those different components. Our biblical foundation for this module is as follows. Chapter 13, we look to Hebrews, the second chapter, verses 1 through 3, which read as follows. Therefore, we must pay much closer attention to what we have heard lest we drift away from it. For since the message declared by angels proved to be reliable, and every transgression or disobedience received a just retribution, how shall we escape if we neglect such a great salvation? It was declared at first by the Lord, and it was attested to us by those who heard. So from looking at Hebrews and looking at the topic of reliability, we will proceed to move forward. Our first topic, reliability. The consistency of the results that are obtained focuses on the subject of reliability. Uh, the concerns focus on the extent to which the instrument, whether it's a survey or not, yields the same results in repeated trials. Typically, researchers will find three types of reliability. First, enter observer, second, test and retest, and thirdly, internal consistency. So when we look at the first one, enter observer reliability, we seek to assess the extent to which different observers will give the following, similar scores to the same phenomena. Secondly, we look at test, retest reliability, and as our textbook talks about, we look at the assessment of the extent to which the instrument would provide the same measurements if repeated at a different time. And also, an instrument with high test retest reliability reports the same score consistently as long as the stimulus does not change. So, within the context of this, we're seeking to make sure that the reliability is consistent, both the first time we test it as well as any additional retest. And thirdly, we look at internal consistency reliability. It refers to the extent to which each question consistently measures the same variable. That is, whether the items in the scale are consistent with one another, and that they represent only one dimension, one construct, or area of interest throughout the scale. So these are three areas of reliability. Next, we look at the term validity. Validity is the extent to which an instrument accurately measures the target it was designed to measure. It helps a researcher determine whether or not an instrument addresses its design purpose. And typically, there are three types of validity. You have content validity, criterion validity, and construct validity. Content validity is also called face validity. It addresses whether or not the instrument appears to measure what it was designed to measure from another person's point of view. It is often not as precise because it is not measurable, which leads us to the second area of validity, which is known as criterion validity. It is measured by comparing the instrument with current or future criteria, and there are typically two subtypes. These include a predictive validity, which is a comparison between the instrument 
in some later predicted behavior, while B is concurrent validity. It compares scores on an instrument with performance on some other measure. So these two subtypes are very important when it comes to criterion validity. Our third area of validity focuses on construct validity. Construct validity determines whether a scale measures or correlates with a theorized psychological construct. And as your textbook states, there are two subtypes. The first, discriminant validity, which is an instrument that does not correlate significantly with variables from which it should differ. And then convergent validity is an instrument that correlates highly with other variables with which it should theoretically correlate. So these are our three areas of validity. Next, we move to what is known as exploratory factor analysis. So as we move into this area of our module, uh, we look at the fact that there is variable reduction technique. Uh, within the context of this technique, it combines several related independent variables into fewer, more basic underlying factors thus revealing a less complicated internal structure that conforms to the given data. And it determines a model that best fits the data itself. Confirmatory factor analysis is another component of research. It allows the researcher to confirm the fit of the data with predetermined models that is typically based on prior research, whether it's in the field of sports management or kinesiology. Uh, this is a very unique analysis component. CFA, as confirmatory factor analysis is known as, is a tool for theory testing. It is often performed at the exploratory factor analysis, and it's the analysis that looks at the goodness of fit of the model as proposed by examining the overall size of the residual that it produces. That completes chapter 13 of our module 6. Now we move to chapter 14, which focuses on relationships between variables. So again, we're adding another layer to your research process uh, in KINE 5301, where our objectives for chapter 14 are as follows. We will seek to understand bivariate and multiple correlations understand the meanings of positive and negative correlations, understand simple linear regression, understand the following, multiple regression, sequential multiple regression, forward selection multiple regression, stepwise multiple regression, and finally, backward deletion multiple regression. So each of these objectives are discussed in chapter 14. But as we've done in previous modules, we again start with our biblical foundation. Our biblical foundation for chapter 14 is as follows. And we find that scripture in Romans, the 8th chapter, the 14th through the 17th verse, which reads, for all who are led by the Spirit of God are sons of God. For you did not receive the spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption as sons and daughters by whom we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then we're heirs and heirs of God and fellow heirs with Christ provided we suffer with him in order that we may also be glorified with him. So just as these relationships are discussed in Romans 8 verses 14 through 17, we seek to do the same as it relates to the relationships between variables, whether they're independent or dependent variables, as a part of your research. First, we look at bivariate and multiple correlation. Uh, it evaluates the degree of relationship between quantitative variables, and that's between two quantitative variables, without distinction between the independent and dependent variables. Or, on the other hand, 
multiple correlation, which determines the relationship between three or more variables. Positive correlations look at the following. For example, in a positive correlation, as the value of one of the variables increases, the value of the second variable increases. Likewise, as the value of one of the variables decreases, the value of the other variable decreases. Negative correlations. In a negative correlation, as the value of one of the variables increases, the value of the second variable decreases, and vice versa. Negative correlations are sometimes described as inverse correlations. So again, another aspect of effective research. Next, we look at simple linear regression. It is similar to bivariate correlation in that it analyzes the relationship between two variables. An added benefit of simple linear regression analysis is that it produces a regression equation that can be used for prediction purposes. Simple linear regression also states that a regression equation is essentially a formula that produces a best fit line that describes the relationship of the independent and dependent variables. Such information allows a researcher to predict a value for the dependent variable based on the value of the independent variable. Multiple regression allows the researcher to expand the number of independent variables in the regression equation. The purpose of multiple regression analysis is to create a regression equation. And this equation is used for predicting a dependent variable from a group of independent variables. For example, a sports marketing researcher might want to determine which combination of spectator motors best predicts media consumption behavior of MMA fans. In this case, multiple regression would allow the researcher to determine the best combination of predictors, i.e. independent variables, that significantly predict the desired outcome, which is a de dependent variable in this case of media consumption. Second, sequential multiple regression. <clears throat> in this approach, the researcher specifies a particular order in which variables are entered into the analysis. The rationale for using this technique would be that According to past research, it has led the researcher to believe that one variable may be more influential than others in the set of predictors themselves. Thirdly, forward selection multiple regression. The independent variable in this area of regression finds that the highest correlation with the dependent variable on the basis of a correlation matrix and it is entered into the model first and assessed in terms of its contribution to the prediction of the dependent variable. Stepwise selection multiple regression is our fourth area of multiple regression. At each step, certain tests are performed to determine the significance of each independent variable already in the equation. As if it were to enter last, it is then possible that the initial variable would be dropped in the analysis because it no longer serves as a substantial contributor. And last but not least is the backward deletion multiple regression. This variation computes an equation with all predictors included, followed by a significance test for every predictor, as if each were entered into last in order to determine the level of contribution to overall prediction. So, after having looked at chapter 13, as well as chapter 14 and module six, uh, the question becomes, what's next? Uh, encourage you to complete your detailed reading, answer the discussion question or questions, as well as complete the writing assignment. And your continued participation in the course is very important. This concludes Module 6.